This is an RV3. It's a single seat tailwheel. Duh. And the first original design by Vans Aircraft Company. Today I'm going to show you what it's like to own one. First of all, you'll notice it's pretty small. Me for scale. Wings are just less than 20 feet and tip to tail just 19. This one lives in this large shared hangar where no plane should fit, but the RV3 easily does under both a Cessna 172 and a J3 Kitten. At just 750 pounds empty, it moves easily around by grabbing the propeller. You can even pick up the arse end and wheel bear it if you need to. Fueling is as easy as it gets. Two wing tanks below waist height. Each holds 15 gallons of 100 low lead for 180 pounds of fuel. That gives about four hours in the air. Walk around is equally straightforward with everything easily within reach. Tank sump valves are down pretty low, so you have to crouch way down, but not a big deal. Inserting and removing your posterior isn't without challenge, though the shorter you are, the easier it becomes. If your legs aren't short enough to bend under the panel while seated, mine aren't, entering and exiting is sort of a two-phase process. It's not major, but doing it once per flight is enough. Best to make sure your exterior business is sorted before you get in. Once inside, there's plenty of space to sit comfortably, but little else. There are lots of places for pens and iPads and checklists, but I can't think of where I could even put a cup holder. There's enough spare space to stretch out even long legs between the rudder pedals, which is great for cruising cross country. But decide if you want the sweater on or off before you leave the ground. You'll be hard pressed to change your mind in the air. Not that there's anywhere to stash an unwanted sweater anyway. On the ground only storage space is ample and will hold many sweaters. Weight limit's 30 pounds. Golf clubs need not apply. Visibility over the nose isn't as bad as some tailwheel planes, especially those with tandem seating where you sit in the back, but it isn't great either. S-turns are definitely required. <laughs> Vans designed the RV3 with about 100 horsepower in mind. Many have been upgraded to 140 or 50. This one has 165. Remember, this is a 750 pound airplane. There's only so much right rudder to go around, so takeoff power is applied gingerly. On a paved runway, I rotate around 70, but on the grass, anything over 65 and some little bump will send you in the air. Climbing out of sea level can be done at about 2,500 feet per minute, which seems excessive. Pitching for 110 knots, you'll see about 1,500 feet per minute or so, which feels a little more civilized. It slows to just under 1,000 feet per minute once you get up to 10,000 feet. The ceiling is 20,000 feet, but not much reason to go up there, really. At 10,000 feet density altitude, I showed 140 knots true at 6.5 gallons an hour. I usually fly between 6 and 8,000, burn 8 gallons, and true out at about 155 knots. Across the van spectrum, the RV3 is the most nimble and fun. And with the least amount of plane to block your view, it has the best visibility, perhaps tied with the RV4. You just need to think about turning and the wings will start to roll. A little pressure on the stick and you're over in a hurry. That's all well and good. Good. However, the 3 is the lightest vans, has the highest power to weight ratio, the shortest wings by far. Pretty much everything that makes it the most fun also makes it the most squirrely. It's definitely the worst suited for cross country and arguably the most difficult to land. Speaking of which, let's get on with that. Your job in the downwind is to get below 100 knots in order to deploy the first notch of flaps. Another notch of flaps goes in on the crosswind and I pitch for 75. On final, I drop my last flap and I shoot for about 70 knots over the fence. Every 3 gear legs are famously springy. Many builders add wooden or metal stiffeners to the legs to tone it down a bit. Bouncing a little on landing is very common, especially on a grass runway. All of that said, landing safely isn't a challenge. It's more landing pretty that takes some work. The plane handles exceptionally on the ground and in the air. I don't get turned off easily by crosswind. Getting in a slip on final is standard practice. I have a lot of experience in owning and driving motorbikes. It's interesting how much overlap there is between the RV3 and a motorcycle. Yes, you can use a motorbike for traveling. You can use it to transport something that's not very big, but it is possible, just like the RV3. Additionally, they're both extremely well suited for whipping around, turning tight, and having some good old-fashioned high-speed fun. The RV3 befits someone looking for a little bit of zip in their flying, who appreciates fun as much as or more than function. It's also very well suited for attracting attention at airports. It looks like a hot rod. The RV14 is poised to surpass the 3 in the number of planes completed, making the 3 once again the most rare vans. Basically, RV3 is your very cool, very fun flying motorcycle. That's owning Vans RV3. Thanks for watching. See you in the next.